What is going on everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here. Now, I know this is primarily a Jacksonville Jaguars YouTube channel. However, there you know, there goes some times during the week and during the during the day that, you know, whether it be in the crew, whether it be on social media, whatever, I see these posts or I hear these conversations and it makes me want to talk, right? It makes me want to say my opinions or, you know, put them out there. Do my opinions matter? Not really. I'm just kind of a guy on YouTube that has a decent amount of subscribers, but I'm also a guy that likes to talk and put my opinion out there so you guys can roast me or agree with me or share your opinions down below so we can have a fair discussion. So that's what I decided to do. I decided to kind of compile a list of certain things that I've seen throughout the week and discuss them in a podcast format. So if you want to sit there, kick back, relax, listen to the full podcast, you definitely can. If not, I'm going to be clipping these and posting them throughout the week. We have a couple um, of discussions to talk about today. One, for example, is Sam Darnold. Is Sam Darnold a bust? Is he going to work out in Cal- in Carolina? We also are going to be talking about Tim Tebow making his NFL return to the Jacksonville Jaguars to play the tight end position. And we're also going to be talking about this guy on TikTok that I saw in his hot takes and whether I agree with him, whether they're ludicrous, and all that in between. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Treeb Hot Takes Podcast, Episode 1. So obviously to start off this podcast, I decided to start off with the one and only piece of Jacksonville Jaguars news that we have on today's episode, and that is Tim Tebow signing on with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now this has been rumored now for a couple of weeks. Right, it's gonna be a long podcast now, so I'll be talking at you guys for a bit. So I'm gonna be drinking some Gatorade and I'm gonna be smoking, so you guys are gonna just have to deal with that as well. But the Jaguars signed Tim Tebow to play the tight end position. Now originally when this got reported that Tim Tebow was coming to Jacksonville, I thought he was gonna come on as a coach, you know, coach with his old um college head coach and Urban Meyer. But uh he actually got a workout. And he decided that, uh, you know what, we need a tight end. We didn't draft Kyle Pitts. We didn't draft any other tight ends. So, you know what, why don't you come to town and be our starting tight end? And the fan base, the fan base is split. I mean, you, you, get, you get any kind of crazy thing like this, and, you know, it's you're going to divide a fan base. But something that I think uh, for Jacksonville Jaguar fans you should be happy about uh, you should be happy for two things. Thing number one, you're getting national media coverage. These two big pieces of things that happened to you this week um, with you guys drafting Trevor Lawrence and now getting Tim Tebow, one of the most you know polarizing figures in all of football, you know, college football, the NFL, to come and try out and play for your team. Like, that is big news. And the Jaguars are such a, you know, small market team, such a lower you know, tier team as far as getting national media coverage. I don't think the Jaguars have had a Monday night or a Sunday night football game since 2012. And that is absolutely ridiculous. This is what this does for you. I mean, with the with bringing in Trevor Lawrence and bringing in, you know, a character like Tim Tebow. And Tim Tebow's not a distraction, you know what I mean? And it's not like the Jacksonville Jaguars have a elite tight end room. To where you can really scoff at this and say, Woof, well that's really a slap in the face to James O'Shaughnessy, isn't it? Because it's really not, you know, it's not a slap in the face to James O'Shaughnessy. Because there were, you know, NFL scouts out there that thought, you know, Tim Tebow graded out as a better tight end than he did a quarterback coming out of college. It was Tim Tebow's decision to come into the NFL and play the quarterback position. I remember when Tebow came in... To the NFL, I was in the sixth grade, and you know, seeing him make that playoff run back in 2012, I was a big Tim Tebow fan. It was hard for you not to be a big Tim Tebow fan, and I remember that was kind of at the beginning of my Jacksonville Jaguars fandom. And you know, a lot of people around the Jaguars, you know, didn't want Tim Tebow in the building because they would have rather had a guy like Cam Newton, or they would have rather had a guy like Blaine Gabbert. But you know. 
I digress there. Now all those people that back in the day were clamoring to get Tim Tebow, guess what? They finally, finally get to have Tim Tebow. And is that not awesome? That's awesome, man. That's fun. That's amazing. Tim Tebow back in Jacksonville, back in the Florida area where he made a name for himself. I mean, when he was in college, he was probably the most, that was like a really fun team. And Urban Meyer was a part of that team. You know, there's some scandal to go on with that team as well, obviously, with the Aaron Hernandez situation. But, I mean, this is uh, having a low-risk signing with a, you know, a high possibility of putting a lot more fans in your seats, putting a lot more casuals in, in the seats, I should say. I mean, you get, like, a ma and pop, you know, coming from, coming from you know, Sunday church and they hear that, you know, Tim Tebow, the, the guy from Florida, is coming to play tight end for the Jaguars, you know, they might stop by after church, you know, they might buy a jersey, you know, at the end of the day, Shad Khan, that's a businessman, and, you know, he owns part of AEW, All Elite Wrestling, that his son owns, and, you know, that's the entertainment business, so I could definitely see, you know, the marketing and the entertainment factor as to why the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to try and bring in Tim Tebow, and it's not like the Jaguars have any remarkable tight ends in the tight end room right now. So, you might as well give him a chance. You might as well give him an opportunity, a fair shake. And, you know, when they start selling Tim Tebow jerseys, there is there is a lot of potential there. There is a lot of potential there that Tim Tebow jerseys, they might. They might outsell Trevor Lawrence jerseys. Like, that's how big of a, big of a name Mr. Tim Tebow is in the Duval, Jacksonville area. So, that's going to be very... Very exciting to see, and I'm excited to see how it pans out. You know, it's kind of a it's a win-win situation for the Jacksonville Jaguars, in my opinion. It's a win-win situation for Tim Tebow. I mean, the guy's a competitor. He wants to play sports, and, you know, this is the best in he has to have another opportunity to play sports at a professional level, and if he has to convert to the tight end position, then so be it. And if he's willing to do that for Jacksonville, and he's willing to do it for his old coach in Urban Meyer, then he's going to do it. And, you know... You know, more power to him. More power to him. Now, if we go back and we talk about the date that this happened, this was, this you know, the news kind of broke around the draft. So around the day of the first round of the draft was when, you know, people were starting to figure out that Tim Tebow is going to be trying out and try to play tight end for the Jacksonville Jaguars. There was a uh, clearly some other some other news that that happened um, as far as draft day with other teams, and this one's not as good. And that is Aaron Rodgers wanting to come out of Green Bay. Now, my opinion on that, in my opinion on you know, and and it was kind of the same thing on how I felt for Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson now is different. Right? Deshaun Watson now, Deshaun Watson's in a terrible situation, and, you know, if he got out before then, and before all that stuff leaked, you know, good for him, but now, he's kind of stuck in a situation where he's at. But, does Aaron Rodgers not do this every year? Like, I feel like every year, like, Aaron Rodgers gets, you know, a little more and more fed up with the Green Bay Packers organization. Right? You know, I'm... Am I reading into that too wrong, Packers fans? Let me know in the comments section. But if I had to be honest, I don't think he's going anywhere. I don't think he'll get traded. I mean, if he was going to get traded, I think it would have been during the draft. And, you know, there was there was no movement. There was no, you know, crazy stories of something happening like that. No. I mean, when you have a franchise player like Aaron Rodgers and a guy like Aaron Rodgers, you know, you're not going to want to get rid of him. And it sucks because sometimes you get players with that kind of personality. And, you know, Aaron Rodgers is a guy that abandoned his whole family, right? So, you know, you you can imagine that he's not a guy that would be up, you know, too good to leave the organization that drafted him and gave him a chance, you know. He, like, he wouldn't, he wouldn't be above doing that, you know what I mean? But I also think there's a line to where... 
you're kind of in the best situation that you can be right now. And all the other teams that have like a lot of great talent, you know, already kind of have their quarterback situation figured out for the most part. And that's what a lot of these, you know, I think fan bases need to be a little bit more realistic, right? And, you know, and I think that's why the analysts and, like, you know, the professionals, they're not really reading too much into this and they're not sitting there saying, oh, well, Aaron Rodgers should go here because, or Deshaun Watson should go here because, because th- there's just no reason for him to because he has a good, a good solid foundation in Green Bay already. And, you know, where is he going to go, right? You're not going to, there's just nothing to me right now that screams like Denver is a great landing spot for Aaron Rodgers. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what what exactly screams to you that he could go to a team like Denver or maybe a team like Las Vegas? Las Vegas is kind of the closest I would, I would say Denver's closer than Las Vegas to me personally if I was Rodgers to where I'd want to go. But, I mean, even then, you're kind of cutting ties. You know, with all these mediocre teams that are looking for a quarterback right now, right? Like, what do they have above all else that Green Bay doesn't already have? And you already know this system. And you're already going to NFC Championship games. The matter of the fact is, is that Aaron Rodgers as a quarterback and Aaron Rodgers as a leader needs to close and finish these games, right? You don't want to... I wouldn't want to, you know, go and play for another team that, you know, has less, has less than what they have, you know? And, and like I said, if I had to pick a team that is most realistically a fit for Aaron, Her- Aaron Hernandez, I was already back on the Tim Tebow stuff, Aaron Hernandez, Aaron Rodgers, I would say that would be Denver... Because I do like Denver's weapons, and I think Melvin Gordon's low-key like a top-10 running back every year. But, I mean, even then, you look at those weapons, and they're kind of young. They got some butterfinger problems, and, I mean, you got you got some people on the defense. Vaughn Miller's obviously going to be, you know, a, an appealing piece all the time. But, I mean, I mean, that's about it. You know, I, w- I would just say, like, you see Rodgers do this almost every year. You see Aaron Rodgers kind of get sick of where he's at, kind of get fed up with the situation every year. And I think everybody, everybody's kind of just, they're just, they're reading too much into it. And I don't think he leaves Green Bay. Um, If I had to give a team that I think he fits the best into would be Denver. But again, I think if I was Aaron Rodgers, I'd rather stay in Green Bay than go to Denver. Because then you play Patrick Mahomes twice a year, right? You know, in in the NFC North... You're the kings of the NFC North right now. What? You play maybe a Justin Fields twice a year now. You play Jared Goff twice a year. You play Kirk Cousins twice a year. I mean, this is, you're in a way better spot to win and to keep going to these NFC Championship games. You just have to close the deal and actually win it with Green Bay. You know what I mean? Like, there's just, there's absolutely no way for me that uh, Green Bay isn't the best plot, best spot possible for Aaron Rodgers. I think if Aaron Rodgers is leaving, he's retiring. I mean, there's, there's no way, you know, that he would that he would test his luck somewhere else. I don't think. Now, speaking of a couple more quarterbacks, and I just, you know, I want to I want to get into I want to get into two specific specific quarterbacks, right? Most importantly and most notably, one quarterback by the name of Sam Darnold, right? Now, I have known Sam Darnold it was going to be garbage from the jump. And I will not backtrack that. Like, I have been getting into arguments with the crew in the crew chat. And, you know, you, Larry says he's average. Barnes says he's average. Me and Cole says he's garbage, right? There's just nothing to me that he does at all. With, you know, being a top three draft pick, I get, right? I get the whole point of him playing for the Jets, playing in a really bad situation. But when you were supposed to be the best QB of your class, right? And you're supposed to be, you know, this great next level quarterback, you should elevate your play despite everything around you, right? That's what all the great number number one, number two, number three overall quarterbacks do, and if they don't, they're bust. That's how it goes. Is that not, like, the case for all these quarterbacks? And I don't know why 
everybody wants to give Sam Darnold kind of that pass. Like, he was in the most impossible situation of all time. Like, he's going to suddenly go to Carolina, and that's going to fix everything, right? You know, like, Carolina's a pretty solid football team right now. I mean, they got Christian McCaffrey, um, DJ Moore. They have a pretty de decent defense and a pretty much decent wide receiver core. So, if he does not succeed, which I still do not think he will because he is not a good quarterback, I still think they go 4-12, and 5-11, and 11, right? They are going to lose because of... Sam Darnold, and if they win games, they're going to win in spite of Sam Darnold. This is a team that could go 7-9, 6-10 next year, but that is on the back of, you know, young defensive talent that they have brought in to play for this Carolina Panthers team, and with Christian McCaffrey being the game's best running back, best versatile player probably in the whole entire league. Has nothing to do with Sam Darnold being there. And I think with Carolina... Being a team that was picking at number 8, and you had an opportunity probably, you know, seeing how this draft fell out, to to get a guy like Mac Jones, who I think, being in Carolina's system, right, would have had an opportunity to be successful and to be a good quarterback. You had a guy like Justin Fields as well, who I still think, you know, if you sat him behind Sam Darnold, and, you know, he learned the ropes. And this is a guy that probably could have came in week 6-7 and been a better quarterback than Sam Darnold, and you did it. And now you're in a situation in Carolina where you're kind of screwed because next year this quarterback class is the worst quarterback class I have seen in the last five, six years. And you did that banking on the fact that Sam Darnold is going to be your future quarterback because of what? And the, and the funny thing is, is that they signed him with the expectation that they were going to pick up his fifth-year option, and they haven't even picked up his fifth-year option. It's like, the team that traded for him doesn't even believe in him. Like, like what did you, what was the point of trading for Sam Darnold when you guys seem like you guys are just as hesitant about him as all of his critics are, as all of these... Other people are like, what was the point of that when you could have got guys like Mac Jones, could have got guys like Justin Fields as well who was there, like, but you pick Sam Darnold who has had three, three, one, two, three, in three, four years now, three total 100 yard, 300 yard passing games. That is bad. In today's NFL, that is absolute horrid, terrible, bad, and you just better hope that, like, these problems were getting masks totally by a terrible offense, offensive-minded coach by a terrible offensive line. You better hope that all those problems were completely because of that and has nothing to do with how Sam Darnold is a quarterback. Like, you look at the film, you look how he is as a quarterback, you look how he throws the ball when he's off, he's a check down, he doesn't take shots down the field. I think it's like, it's like a six seven yard per average throw like that's terrible I mean he is just not a guy that is going to get it done for you and if that was going to be your plan all along to get a guy like Sam Sam Darnold I mean I almost would have just kept Teddy Bridgewater and just hoped that like you know if Sam Darnold didn't work out or if Teddy Bridgewater got hurt you know then you play Sam Darnold because Teddy Bridgewater Playing with Teddy Bridgewater for full game, full, full uh, sixteen games, floor you get a seven and nine, ceiling you get a ten and six. With Sam Darnold, you got a floor of three and thirteen and a ceiling of seven and nine. This was a terrible decision, especially when you weigh the possibilities that were there. You know they could have drafted a quarterback that uh, could have had a better future, and now you're married to a guy that. Uh, that if it doesn't work out, then, then oh boy, you are in some trouble. And you better hope that uh, Aaron Rodgers is serious about leaving Green Bay because that is a guy, that's a guy that you're going to have to target because that is, uh, is going to be one big challenge. And one more quarterback to, to talk about before we get into these hot takes that I saw on TikTok and whether or not um, I agree with them or not. We just talk. We need to talk a little bit about Lamar Jackson, right? I get it's funny, and I get, I get the memes, right? 
I get the means about Lamar Jackson being a running back and like just being a mobile guy and just you know running's his first option what have you right but it's about time that everybody and their mom and everybody that watches the game of football understands that every quarter like unless you know you're Tom Brady you're Aaron Rodgers you know yeah you'd put him in I'd put Lamar Jackson in my top 10 and there's no way he shouldn't be in your top 10. And if he's not, I'd like to hear why. Because Lamar Jackson constantly is going to the playoffs. He's constantly finding ways to win. And when he throws the ball, he continues to wow you with how he throws the ball. Especially when he's playing with a wide receiver core who is literally the worst in the NFL. And they haven't you know, tried to make it better. It's giving me Aaron Rodgers vibes, right? They're not, they're not trying to help Lamar Jackson right now by giving him... Give them better receivers, but I think it's about time that, you know, we all as kind of a football community and as football fans kind of just sit down, smell the coffee, realize and talk about that Lamar Jackson's a top 10 quarterback. For sure. And I'd love to hear, I'd love to hear your reasons why he's not because, because he is. Okay, so going back, here we go, pull him up. Going back to that TikTok I saw earlier, um, he said some NFL hot takes, and and let me tell you, dude, these are some good hot takes, and I almost kind of just want to take them as credit, credit for my own, but they're not. Um, I wish I got the guy's username, but I scrolled right past him. Um, so I'm going to tell you them, and uh, I'm going to tell you if I agree or disagree with them. The first one is Miami winning the, the uh, AFC East next year, 100%. I could see that happening 100%. I mean, Buffalo is still kind of riding that wave of being pretty hot, right? Like, that's the team to beat in the AFC East, but Miami wasn't that far behind, man. That was a that was a that was a good a good good football team last year. Not to mention Miami probably had the best draft class this season, so I could see that without a doubt. Miami winning the AFC East, 100%. In fact, I'd put money on that. I'd I'd say that's true. I would say that's true. I love Miami winning the AFC East. Let's book that. Washington having the best defense next year. That's another good one. Chase Young is going to develop into the into a top 10 pass rusher next year. They've put so much draft capital into this defensive line. That's going to continue and continue and continue to get better. And I just, I can't wait to see the development of this team, right? It's going to be exciting. It's going to be awesome. And, you know, I agree with that, too. I agree with that, too. It, these are hot takes, too, because that one's kind of the first little hint of spice you got, right? Because Miami was a little like, okay, I can see that. Miami, I mean, with Washington having the best defense, that's a that's a little hint of some spice right there, right? That's some spicy, spicy takes right there. And, and you know, if that's something that you want to say as a hot take, I can get down with that because I think they're definitely going to rank amongst the top 10. Being the best, though, we'll see because they have potential. It's there. It's definitely there. I like that one. I like that one. And the final one is another one I really do like because this goes back to kind of what I was saying with Sam Darnold is the Jets will be the most improved team next year. I really like that, especially with only having two wins next year. You know, it's going to be hard for them not to improve overall. I think the Jets are going to have, let's see, Sam Darnold's best season as a Jet was 7-9. Zach Wilson's first season as a Jet is going to be as good, if not better, than Sam Darnold's first year with the Jets. And that's this, this is where it's going to happen, right? This is where, you know, you're really going to try and see how good or how bad Sam Darnold is. Because Zach Wilson's going to come into the same organization that is garbage. And he's going to play really well. Because I really like Zach Wilson. And I think he's going to do great things for this organization. And organization do a lot of great things for the Jets as well. And it's going to be it's going to be kind of a flip of the switch moment to everybody that thought Sam Darnold, you know, is an average guy. Hasn't been put in a good situation. When he is 0-5... And Sam Dar, I mean, and uh, Zach Wilson sitting at three and two, four and one because that kid is a dog, and he's going to be in the same situation that Sam Darnold's been in for the last couple of years. I love that prediction. I think they win six, seven games next year under um, under Zach Wilson. 
The only team that I would say is going to improve more next year would be my would be my favorite team, your favorite team, and your mom's favorite team, the Jacksonville Jaguars, just because they only had one win last year. They got Trevor Lawrence. They got ETN. They got targets for days. The only really big glaring hole for them is the defense, but the Jaguars only won one game last year. I would say if they won six, then that's a big improvement from last year. So I would say, yeah, the Jets and the Jaguars definitely both have you know potential to be the number one and the number two. Uh, most improved team in the NFL next year. Alrighty, guys, thank you guys so much for tuning in to episode one of the Trevin Hot or the Tree, but you guys don't know Trevin of Treeb's Hot Take Podcast. Tell me what you guys think you, in the comment section down below. Don't forget, you can check on links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Troop Talks. Follow me on Instagram at Trey. Vaughn Pixley. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.